Good afternoon and welcome to Home Park. The setting this afternoon for the Skybet League One fixture, Plymouth Argyle against Morecambe. Good afternoon, this is Argyle TV. I'm back and I'm Erin Black and over the next 45 minutes or so we are going to be building up for a pretty crucial game here at Home Park for both sides. Argyle are going to be looking to get back to their winning ways while Morecambe, managed by former Argyle boss Derek Adams, is hoping that he can weave his magic for, uh, for them. Now, we will get to the team news. We're going to be doing some build-up with Ian Stonebridge very shortly. And here, of course, from Argyle boss Stephen Schumacher in just a moment. But today's game, very importantly, is dedicated to the Her Game 2 fixture. Now, Her Game 2 was set up by female fans back in 2021. And it's a campaign designed to stop sexism in football. Before we bring in Yotta Papianu and Imi Crawford for Argyle women, let's find out a little bit more about her game too. Hello, now joining us now on Argyle TV is Yotta and Imi from Argyle Women. Hey, nice to see you both. How are you doing this afternoon? Yeah, good, thank you. Yeah. Good, yeah, very good. Nice to see you both. Um, okay, so first of all, Her Game 2, what do you think about the whole movement behind this? Yeah, I think it's really important for the women's game, obviously, to get as many girls and women involved in the game and have an equal opportunity. Hiya, hiya. Hi. Um, yes, I agree with what Amy has said and uh, I think it's really important the fact that the men's team have uh, in sort of initiated this movement because hopefully more of the people, the supporters, will uh, be attracted to women's football as well. Yeah. Okay, well Yotta, while you got the microphone, let's go to you. Just talk me through your background in football growing up and how you got into it. Yeah, so, um, I come from, from Greece. I came to the UK to do my studies. I'm a physiotherapist. So, in Greece, women's football is not really that big at the moment. Uh, that was an, one of the main reasons why I moved here because I knew football was uh, growing in England quicker than what it is in Greece and I've seen massive difference and, and I think um, I've only been playing football uh, for eight years but I've seen massive difference in these eight years and I think people who are older can probably notice more like bigger difference anyway. Yeah, fantastic. Imi, how about you? What was your experience growing up with football and how did you get into it? Yeah, so I've played since I was about six and I started off with a boys team. So I've seen like obviously the different treatment between 
girls and boys like used to get comments on the sidelines because you're obviously like the only girl playing but like you said I think over the years I've seen a massive change in how we're treated in the game yeah. and it's getting more equal. So growing up having to play in a boys team I guess that is because there was just such a lack of like girls teams available for you to yeah, be part Yeah definitely. Of. I only had the Devon team a few years later which I could join but from like six to I'd say till 15 I played for a boys team because there was no opportunity for me to really play at a higher level for girls. Yeah, and now you've progressed into these higher levels. Do you experience sexism in football when you're playing? Do you see it in matches? Uh, not as, I wouldn't say as much as I've used to when I play with the boys. Yeah, I think it's got a lot better, but I still think there's room for change and improvement where we're treated a bit differently to the men's team. Yeah, Yotta, how about you? Um, Again, I'd say personally, I probably haven't really experienced um, like sexism, but I've seen on social media like Instagram and Facebook um, different comments on uh, probably more famous footballers, if you like, yeah. um, in the Super League. And um, but I think there's steps to be done, but um, at the same time, there's some improvement been made. For example, the Super League, the Women's Super League, is now being uh, live every week on Sky Sports. Yeah. So that's something that's happened, and hopefully more to come. What kind of things do you think would help improve kind of just spreading awareness about women's football in general and making it a, a better environment, maybe on par with, with men's football? Um, I would say her game too. So today's probably a really nice occasion. So hopefully people would, uh, you know, our guy fans to start with will uh, realise, you know, there's a, a women's team and, you know, we've had two games so far at Home Park. Yeah. And so I think that's a, a lovely campaign. Um, I don't know about you, have you got anything else in mind? Uh, I think we need a bit more coverage. There's yeah. not many people that probably know about our team and where, like, where we play or our game. So just having that like today, we'll get a lot of coverage, which is good for us. Yeah. And I mean, while we're, we're on here, why don't you tell us you know, about your team and, and where you play and what you would maybe most want Argyle fans that are coming to see the men play, if, if you wanted them to come see you too, what kind of stuff do they need to know? Yeah, so we play at Maladon Sports Hub every Sunday, well not every Sunday, when we're home mm -hmm. at 2.30 kick-off most weeks, so as many people could come along and support us, it helps us a lot in the games, we've got a lot of big games coming out, so that would yeah. be great. Yeah, fantastic. Yotta, how about you? What would you say to encourage people to come over and check out Argyle women? Yeah, I know, like Amy said, we play at Manadon, which probably is not ideal if the weather's not so good, because <laughs> uh, there's no stands. But again, even that small difference, um, you know, will make a huge impact, hopefully to our performance. And I think some people haven't really given a chance to women's football, maybe. Yeah. So, you know, if you can come and watch, I think talent is not lacking. So I think you'll... Yeah, you'll enjoy nice. it, I think. A double head nod there yeah, for that thank one. You. Uh, it's great to have both your perspectives on that. And stay with us for just a moment because we're going to be focusing on the women's side for a little bit longer. Uh, you guys had a great 5 0 win over Kinsham Town last week. So um, yeah, we congratulations. Yeah, thank well you. done on that. And you're going to be taking on uh, bottom side Hounslow tomorrow. So fingers crossed for you then. Uh, let's hear now from Gemma Rose and manager Ryan Parks ahead of that game. Uh, so Ryan, obviously last weekend we beat Keenshaw 5 0. Uh, we're away to Hounslow this weekend. What are you expecting from that game? Yeah, so Hounslow have had a difficult season. They had a difficult result on Tuesday night against Oxford, so they're going to try and bounce back. They're going to look to make it difficult. Um, I don't think they've been absolutely hammered by anyone this season, and it looks like the results have been close for a lot of games. So. We know they're going to make it difficult for us. They're going to want to get their first points on the board this season and we're trying to carry on the momentum from Sunday's good win against Kingship. I mentioned after Sunday we also had our first league clean sheet of the season. Are you hoping to get another one on Sunday? Yeah, 100%. Obviously the aim is not to concede goals and score more goals than the other team, so that's always the aim. Um, yes, it's really nice on Sunday for the Poppy and the defence to get a clean sheet and hopefully they can continue to build on that in the coming weeks. And on Sunday we had a, a near full strength squad. Are you hoping to have the same on Sunday? Yeah, yeah, so I think we're back to full strength this week. Beth Ireland's back from a trip abroad, so um, she's back available. Um, there's no real injury concerns um, in the squad, bar Becky Dandridge. She's just went for another scan on her knee, so we can sort of assess where she is and hopefully we can get her back in involved before the end of the season as well. And I know it's a long way to go still in the season, but if other results go away and if we've got a win on Sunday, we could move out the relegation zone. Uh, how big a boost would that be for the team? I'll be massive confidence for the girls. I think. We're getting close all the time and it's we're falling back behind games. It's again there's been midweek fixtures this week which has given us more games in hand. I'd rather have the points than the games in hand. But when you look at the table and you see yourself 
sitting around that relegation zone with the games in hand, it is it does breed a bit of confidence because we know we have got winnable games coming up. So we've just got to take the momentum from Sunday, um, hopefully get another three points against Hounslow and continue building some momentum towards the end of the season. Um, so Gemma, uh, this weekend we've got Hounslow away. Um, before we get on that, let's have a bit of a chat about how you've kind of found the season so far and what it's been like being back at Argyll. Um, I mean, yeah, just getting back into football. Initially, it was it was tough getting back into physically the um, the transition from going to being in the gym every single day to playing football was tough. But it's good to be back at Argyle. Obviously, good to be back playing football again. Um, just starting to enjoy and play football. I loved playing football when I was younger with Argyle. And in terms of the setup, it's obviously progressed drastically in terms of when I was 16 to now I'm 30 years old. Um, but like I said, it's good to be back living in Plymouth and good to be back playing for Argyle. That's really great. And obviously last weekend against Keenshire, we kept our first league clean sheet of the season. Uh, I think you played in the centre the centre of the field. Um, that was really positive as a, as a squad to be able to build on that potential on Sunday as well. Yeah, I mean, I think it was the first clean sheet we've kept all season. Um, so I think it shows in terms of defensively, not just as a back three or a back four, how far we've progressed and how more structured we've become in terms of defending from our strikers and our midfield and then obviously the fence as well. Um, we've started to take more pride on obviously scoring goals and also making sure we take keep clean sheets. Um, and that's, obviously that's something that we need to keep working on moving forwards as well. And on Sunday we're away to Hounslow. What are you perhaps expecting from that game? I'm just expecting and hoping that we build on from last week's performance to be honest. I mean, I've missed a few games, a few players have missed a few games. Um, it's difficult because obviously we work full-time jobs to consistently be able to travel to the likes of Hounslow to play. Um, but in terms of what I expect, it's just to build on from the performance that we had on Sunday. We played some brilliant football, we scored some great goals. Again, like you just alluded to, we kept a clean sheet. So again, I expect to keep a clean sheet and again, I expect to score goals. So a vital win there for Argyle women last week. Yotta, talk me through that game because 5-0 is pretty good going. Yes, I think so. So we had Keensham at home last week. Uh, we won 5-0. I think uh, it was a dominant performance from start to finish. Um, we could have potentially been more clinical in the first half, but I think second half we took our chances. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think defensively, as a defender, I'm quite happy with a clean sheet as well. But, yeah. um, you know, the attackers did their job properly. Yeah. And Imi, yourself, we were just talking when we were off air a second ago and you were saying most of the girls came in the second half. Almost like it was a bad thing, but <laughs> I mean, it sounds very impressive from where I'm standing. Yeah, I think the second half we really picked it up a level and obviously finished the game how we knew we needed to. Uh, it was a big win for us, obviously, in our fight for relegation battle. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, another game tomorrow. How are you hoping you're going to get on with that one based off of your good form in the last match? Yeah, obviously, we'll be hoping to carry on our good form into that game. It's held a lower level than us at the moment, so we're looking to obviously get a win again and carry that on into the next few games. Yeah, and I'm seeing here you have to play Hounslow twice. What's all that about? How will that be crucial in kind of your Yeah, I think goal? with the Hounslow games, I was living at the uh, bottom of the league. I think it's really, really important for us to not underestimate them because we know they're going to be up for it. They're going to fight and they won the three points as much as we do. So we need to go there, switch to be switched on for 90 minutes and hopefully go well with the three points. Yeah. Oh, we've got absolute fingers crossed for Thank you. you Last much. question. You. Feeling confident going into it? Avoid the drop? Yes, I am yeah. feeling quite yeah. confident. I think we've had the um, last couple of weeks of training have been, you know, the intensity levels have been really high. I think the girls have just, something has come together. Yeah. So. And if people want to come and see you play tomorrow, I take it there's still tickets available. Managed and Sports Hub, yeah. No, so that's an away game that's tomorrow. An away game. Yeah, that's oh, we're okay. playing London Way tomorrow. Oh wow! Yeah. So when do you take? When do you set off for that? That's is it four to seven or something? Yeah. Okay. Like seven o'clock. Bit of a trek. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've got all of our support behind you. Yeah, thank, thank you very, very much. much Thanks for, for having us. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you for being here for her thank game you. too. Um, okay, let's turn our attention now quickly to today's game. We're going to bring Ian Stonebridge on in just a moment, but first. Let's hear from Stephen Schumacher. This last weekend against Rotherham was really good. Just didn't get the result that we wanted. Um, but yet yeah, the players are, are excited um, for the challenge of Morecambe. And yeah, um, hopefully it's a big crowd again and we can put on another good performance. The training uh, this week has been excellent. The standard was, was a joke on Tuesday. So if we can, can take that training performance into Saturday's game, then we'll be fine. But as you say, we're in good form, we have been playing well, obviously two bad results of late, but we're desperate to put it right at the weekend. I think it's important not, not to look too far ahead. Obviously we've 
as we've seen, we, we've had to use players and rotate uh, you know, the strikers in particular, but that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be the case. If, you know, if someone goes and scores at Atlantic tomorrow or someone goes and plays really well, there's no, no reason just to take them out for the sake of it. Uh, I'm, I'm conscious of that. But also we've got to know that we've got a real good squad and we always pick a team that's physically got a chance to win in the next game and, and tactically as well. So, so yeah, we'll, we'll continue to do that without getting too clever about it. You said you're not going to look past Saturday, so let's look at Saturday and Morecambe. They've obviously come off a decent result against Ipswich and, and just appointed a manager who the club here obviously know quite well. They'll be very motivated to come here and get a result, won't they? Yeah, definitely. Um, they're always a tough team to play against. We had a real tough game against them early on in the season when Stephen Robinson was in charge and now Derek's gone back there, it'll be no different. Um, as you said, they had a good result the weekend against uh, against Ipswich. And yet, they, we know what they're all about. It, when Derek had them in League Two, they were really well organised. They, you know, they were quite direct as a team, but you know, the structure behind it and, and we're good on the counter attack. So we're expecting something of the same. We need to be at our best with the ball, not be careless with it to, you know, to stop them counter attacks and try and be patient and break them down when we can. If we get an opportunity, if we get as many opportunities as we did last Saturday, then we would hope we would take one. Welcome back to Argyle TV. I'm joined now by Ian Stonebridge. Ian, how are you doing on this nice sunny morning? Hi, Erin. Yeah, afternoon, lovely. even. Lovely again. A little bit of a breeze, but yeah. can't complain really, but can we? With a the change, sun like this. we've managed to ditch our coats and we're not Absolutely, stuck up yeah. in the gantry, rained away. So that is a win from me. Uh, right, Stephen Schumacher talking about the need to take chances. What do you think about that? Yeah. So obviously, last 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 week against Rotherham, we had a you know quite a few good chances, and they'll they'll certainly be looking to. You know, continuing the same vein in terms of creating them, but obviously this time trying to take those chances that come their way this afternoon and, and yeah. make sure we can be on the right side of the result. Yeah. Now, what can Argyle take away from last weekend's game? I mean, I think on the whole it was a really positive performance. We, you know, I certainly came away from the game thinking that it was a, you know, a day that Argyle could be proud of what they've done. Um, as we, as we mentioned, and as I think the manager talked about, really it was just the the icing of the cake on the cake of those those finished chances that really would have made the difference on the day. Yeah, and I mean, I suppose looking at who they're playing today, Argyle will ideally be expecting a win, won't they? I think I think it's it's dangerous when you start expecting something. I'm sure there are plenty of yeah. people here today who might expect that, given the the difference in the league position. Yeah. But you know, I'm I'm sure that between the coaches and, and the players, they'll be approaching this in a really professional man mm -hmm. manner and making sure that they you know, focus on the things they can control, play in the way that they, they, they plan to and, and hopefully be on the side of the right, right result. Yeah. yeah, Never assume, maybe. No. So more of a hope than an expectation yeah. is probably the best way to play yeah, it. Sure. Uh, everyone has just come onto the pitch behind us, met with rapturous applause. So it looks like everyone, at least in the stands, is very much looking forward uh, to this afternoon. If Argyle were to win the game today, do you think they have to win to be in with a chance at the playoffs? I think, you know, there, there are some teams in and around Argyle that are putting some, some good runs together at the moment. And, yeah. and the, the kind of playoff picture, if you like, and the promotion picture has, has changed slightly over the last few weeks. Um, so I think if, if Argyle really want to be in with the chance of, of, you know, being in and around the playoffs at, mm. come the end of the season, there's certainly, you know, it's, 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 these are the games that you really want to be getting three points from yeah. if you're going to be in that picture. Yeah, because I mean, a lot of the games coming up are against those top tier sides, aren't they, in the league? So it is gonna, it's gonna make it a little bit more difficult. So we say not necessarily unexpected, as we talked about, no, but course. this is probably one of the ones that might be, on paper, a more crucial win. Yeah, and and as much as I think we, you know, you expect the manager and the players to be talking about right, we're focused on the next game, and that's the one that counts. Yeah. You know, you do look at games like this in relation to that running come the end of the season, yeah. where we've got those tough tough fixtures. And think about you know this this game at home against the team that are, are lower down the league. It's it's really one they want to want to be aiming to win. Yeah, and March in particular is going to be a really busy month for Argyle. I mean, we've got uh, at least another three home games for the rest of the month. Do you think that's going to play into it in terms of just having these previously postponed matches kind of stacked up? Yeah, I think you know we talked about with, with Charlie before the game last week around the the amount of travelling that the team and the squad had had to do. Um, you know, I think it makes a real difference that they can really focus on recovery and preparation for the game as yeah. opposed to having to think about the logistics and the you know the the impact and fatigue of having to travel so far all the time. So undoubtedly the home games will be a benefit in that respect, but also yeah. you know being being here at home park with hopefully a, you know almost a full house again would, will be fantastic for them. Yeah, and um, we've got to mention the manager of Morecambe, this game in particular, is of course Derek Adams. Do you think that will also have an effect on how Argyle play today? 
I think perhaps for everyone else it has a bit of an effect. You know, it's it's something for us to talk about. Yeah. It's something something for the newspapers to report on. But I think ultimately the, you know, Stephen Schumacher and his coaches in the squad will have their way of approaching the game. And and whilst you know their their knowledge of the way Derek Adams likes to set his teams up might well feed into the way they plan to to play the game. It's not. I don't think it's something that's going to be in the front of their minds. Yeah, fantastic. Well, mentioning Derek Adams and the Morecambe team, let's have a little look at the side that has been chosen for today's game, which will be on screen for you now. The Argyle starting lineup is made up of Michael Cooper, James Bolton, Macaulay Gillespie, Jordan Houghton, James Wilson, Ryan Broom, Joe Edwards, Ryan Hardy, Danny Mayer, Connor Grant, Luke Jeffcott, and on the subs bench we have the likes of Niall Ennis, Jordan Garrick, uh, Adam Randall and Kamara. What do you make of uh, Stephen Schumacher's choice between who's on the bench and, and who's playing today? Yeah, so it's obviously an interesting change in midfield with, with Ryan Broom coming in for, for Kamara. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe there are other factors behind that decision other than just a purely tactical switch, but it's obviously a chance for, for Ryan Broom to stake a claim for you know, starting position. He'll be he'll be really keen to impress today. And up front, you know, the combination of, of Hardy and Jeffcott, you know, it's one that we've seen before and, and has been really effective for Argyle at various times. Yeah. Maybe in contrast to last weekend. So with we've obviously Hardy and Garrick together, there's a there's a lot of pace, that combination of, of trying to get in behind. And here today you've got uh, you know Luke Jeffcott who, who can hold the ball up and will look to bring Hardy into play and still threaten him behind so yeah. hopefully that can be fruitful for us today. And one of the names that we always see ever present in the side is goalkeeper Mike Cooper he was given his debut uh, by Derek Adams in fact as a 17 year old and if he plays again on Tuesday night that will bring him up to his 100th game in green he spoke with Dan Cole earlier this week Yep Good yeah, Training's been good. You know, like you say, we were close to a result uh, that we couldn't, but we couldn't put the ball in the back of the net, um, and that's football, obviously. Uh, but yeah, uh, there's not too much to worry about after after Saturday's performance. I think the result didn't show the the true reflection of the game, um, and we've now got a busy again two three weeks to go into. So yeah. Is it um, easier for the group to kind of move on from quite quickly in that? If you played that game maybe ten times, you possibly would have won six or seven of them. Yeah, um, and that, that's the frustrating thing about about Saturday's performance. You know, even though it was top of the league, who got a great away record and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, to you know maybe have two or three goals that sh uh, we should we should uh, take. Um, it's frustrating, but you know you can take the positives out of it as well. Let's look at the positives then. Despite the last couple of results, we're still right in the thick of the playoff race uh, if you'd been offered that at the start of the season do you think you'd have taken this position right now absolutely yeah I still think the position we're in now we still might even be doing better than what people anticipated as well so um, yeah no we, we would have taken it with open arms definitely but um, now we're just looking looking up and trying trying to get as high as we can on a personal note I think if you play Saturday and Tuesday, Tuesday's game will be your hundredth competitive game for the club at just 22 years old. Yeah. You start to smile already. Yeah. What, what does that mean to you to, to potentially tick off that milestone so soon? Yeah, obviously it means a great deal. Um, you know, everyone knows how much um, uh, the club means to me and how long I've been here. So, um, to hit 50 was good. To hit 100 would be even better. Um, and yeah, it's something that I've been looking to tick off for. Uh, for a long time now, um, so fingers crossed I uh, stay, in, stay in the team Saturday and Tuesday. We chatted to you after your um, 50th game last night and we talked through a few highlights then. Since then, if perhaps the, the Chelsea game a month ago might be up there? Yeah, yeah, no, that's probably uh, <laughs> probably the highlight of my uh, career so far, to be fair. Um, that, that, just, that day in general, just you know that feeling when Maka scored, um, it was, was just unbelievable. So, uh, yeah, the Chelsea moment, I can't even begin to think to be fair in the last 50 games, but um, even just Lawsy's goal at Birmingham, uh, it's, it's, you know, there's been more memories made, and hopefully um, there's more to come. What do you take from as a, as a kind of as a character, as a player? What can you take from that Chelsea game so that it's not just one memory that you know builds the rest of your career? As well? um, I think just the experience against playing um, at, at the Bridge against the world-class players that they've got um, in front of the 40,000. Capacity crowd was, uh, you know, the whole event was 
it was obviously a really, really big day and a really special memory that everyone will treasure. Um, and just the, ex you know, the experience of taking them 120 minutes um, will, will live long in the memory, yeah. Back to league, you, we've clocked up the miles uh, significantly since Christmas so that you're sick of the coach. Um, yep. But the next sort of, uh, I think of the next eight games, six are at home. Uh, not having to travel, got the fans behind you. Do the players sense the kind of the importance of, of the month of March, if you like? Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, you, you, you could say that the next six or seven games could be make or break. Um, in terms of <clears throat> league position and um, our ambitions. Um, however, they are at home most of the games, so um, you know we're looking positively towards each game um, uh, to take as many points as we can and hopefully uh, get to where we want to be. Yeah. That starts with Morecambe on Saturday. Um, we drew up there one all. They've had a, obviously a recent change of manager, a manager you know quite well. Did he give you your Debut, yeah, Blackburn. yeah, I've got a debut under him. Blackburn, um, what are you expecting from Saturday's game? Yeah, we're expecting um, obviously a, a tougher, more tight-knit team to play against, um, a team that we have to probably break down, um, but be wary of on the counter. You know, they've still got uh, top goal scorer you know, for them, Cole Stockton, who's obviously a, a threat. Um, so, you know, we can't rule out the possibility of um, them not being dangerous in their own in their own regard. So, yeah, we've got to um, just make the most of our chances Saturday. Mike Cooper, another player closing in on 100 games for Argyle, and someone Ian who's got a pretty massive future ahead of him. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, Mike still being so young and having played so many games is, is is obviously great for him. I think it's great for the club as well. I think sometimes we get carried away with talking about the future, but it's just great for Argyle that we've got a young player who's come through the academy, who's there now and, yeah. and doing really well. So, no, it's fantastic. Yeah. What would you say are the main things he's improved on from the time that you've seen him playing here with Argyle? So, well, the first time I saw him play for Argyle was probably when he was about 10 years old. So <laughs> <laughs> over, wow, that, okay. <laughs> over that period of time, he's, he, he has improved. I, I, I remember away, an away game at Oxford when he was an under-10 player and I was taking the under-11s and yeah. he, he played in goal. So, you know, the, the way that the goalkeeping role, I think, has changed, you know, and particularly at Argyle with the style of play they have at the moment. Um, you know, Mike's had to improve his ability with his feet quite a lot. Yeah. And I think that's been one of, you know, a really, a really key improvement for him and something that's clear to see is his, you know, comfort receiving the ball and, and helping Argyle to develop possession and, yeah. and play out from the back. So, you know, he's always been a really good shot, st shot stopper. He's always been really reliable, but I think he's added that to his game as well. Yeah. So for the amount of time that you've known him from age 10, mm. it, his goal has always been to be the goalkeeper. That's always what he wanted his position to play. Yeah, absolutely. He was, he was goalkeeper working with Reese Wilmot for many years in the academy and, and you know, he was he was really focused on on you know being the best he could be um you know always uh you know fully attending training and and yeah. really a, you know a good learner and, yeah. and listening to reese in reese he had someone who was a fantastic coach you know the, the detail of of reese's knowledge around goalkeeping you know i think has really helped mike over the years i'm sure he'd be the, one of the first to say that um so it's you know it's, it's brilliant to see him in the first team and doing so well yeah having you know assets like that being a, a quick learner and, and willing to listen and pick things up do you think that will only enhance how good he can go on to be yeah i mean i think having that attitude that you you know despite having played all those games for Argyle he hasn't you know he's not made it he's not finished he, he'll, he'll want to get better and I yeah. think that you know ultimately when you're when you're young um, having that kind of orientation towards open to new ideas open to feedback open to working with people that can can mean you've got that, that greater potential to, to kind of develop in the future and yeah. Yeah, it's, I think it's brilliant for a goalkeeper in particular to play so many games when they're so young because keepers tend to you know, perhaps reach their peak or even get their ch first chance when they're a bit older than yeah. Mike. So it's brilliant for him and the club, I think, that yeah. he's, he's had that early opportunity. I mean, it is quite an impressive feat, as you've said, to be coming up to 100 games at the age he is. I mean, he's just, uh, he's just 20, is that about right? 21? Yeah, 21, I think. 21, yeah. yeah. Um, so, ha I mean, having 100 games under your belt at that age, it, it must be, you know, fantastic for him, fantastic for the club and something to be really proud of. Yeah, and I think uh, particularly the stability of having him, you know, in, in, in goal behind the, the back three this season has been a, a real asset to the club. And, you know, it's ultimately those defenders that play in front of him, they, they will gain confidence from, yeah. you know, his consistency and, and his development as well. How crucial would you say he is to the side overall? 
Well, yeah, at the moment he's you know he's proved himself to be vital in the you know both the number of appearances he's made and in, in his performances as well. You know, he's some fantastic stage, not least his performance away at Chelsea. You know, and and as I said, long may that continue, and, and yeah. long may he be an Argyle player. Yeah, abs- absolutely, <laughs> definitely. Um, okay, moving away from Mike Cooper then, and looking at Argyle as a whole, let's have a quick look at the league table as it stands. Uh, as you'll be able to see on the screen, Argyle are currently three points off the playoffs, uh, and they have two or even three games in hand on some of the teams above them uh, but Rotherham currently looking set to win the league Ian um, you know as the the league table as it stands it does it help that Argyle have got a couple of games in hands against the ones above them it only helps if you win them yeah, very true, very <laughs> so true. you know having, having them on the board and being in the position we're in is, is a good thing undoubtedly but you know if you if you lose them or you don't quite get points from games that you perhaps you should win then then you know they they're obviously less useful it kind of goes without saying obviously but yeah. no i think um it does give them that ability to you know catch teams up and maybe just make a little bit of a a, a late run for those playoffs and yeah. you know bearing in mind that there's those teams around us that are in good form at the moment as well yeah fantastic um speaking of those other teams around us let's have a look at the other fixtures happening in the division as well coming up today we have got cambridge united versus shrewsbury town charlton athletic versus sunderland cheltenham town versus doncaster rovers crew alexandra versus wickham wanderers fleetwood town versus ipswich town Gillingham versus Bolton Wanderers, Lincoln City versus Sheffield Wednesday, Oxford United versus Burton Albion, Portsmouth versus Accrington Stanley, Rotherham United versus Milton Keynes Dons, and Wigan Athletic versus AFC Wimbledon. And there's a few games in there that will be of particular interest to Argyle fans, like the Charlton Sunderland, Crew Alexandra, Wickham, etc. Um, so we'll be looking to see how those pan out over the course of the afternoon, and we will be bringing you updates both at halftime and at full time. You are watching Argyle TV, in case you didn't already know, and we we are building up to Argyle against Morecambe here at Home Park with kickoff uh, just under half an hour away now. Today marks our first game for March. So with that in mind, let's take a look back at the biggest and best moments from February in our moment of the month.
I think it will come as no surprise that the Uber Eats moment of the month of February was, of course, Macaulay Gillespie's goal at Stamford Bridge. Worthy winner, Ian? Yeah, definitely. Although I feel like I should ask you about that one because I was I only jumping around my living room. You were, you were actually in I the was jumping it. around <laughs> the shed end at Stamford Bridge. I mean, it was... I mean, it was a fantastic goal, but just the atmosphere itself was fantastic to be there. Um, my first away game at Argyle, actually, so that was very nice. But yeah, it was like unbelievable. Nobody could believe that it actually happened and that we were 1-0 up against Chelsea. So as far as I'm concerned, absolutely uh, worthy winner. And I guess from your living room as well, it looked pretty good. Definitely, yeah. And, and you know, to, just to take the lead in a, in a game like that is obviously was, was, was a brilliant moment. And, you know, one that I think will live in the in the minds of Argyle fans for, for many Absol a year. <laughs> Absolutely. And there will be another Uber Eats moment of the month at the end of March, so keep your eyes peeled. look at Morecambe now then and last week Derek Adams returned as their manager for the second time he won promotion with them last season before leaving to take over at Bradford City he was back in the dugout last Saturday for their 1-1 draw with Ipswich Town <laughs> Now, we touched on Derek Adams briefly earlier on in our chat, Ian, but do you think his appointment makes today's game a little bit more interesting? Yeah, like I said, I think it's it's certainly something that's um, you know worth us having a chat about and worth people discussing. And yeah. maybe maybe it's less important for those in and around the game. I think for for Derek Adams himself, you know, and there's no doubt that coming back here in one of his first games back at the club is is obviously a big day for him, and he'll yeah. be wanting to to get one over on his former employer. Mm -hmm. What do you think he will change or, or do at Morecambe to kind of try and give them the edge today? Yeah, you know, they're they're obviously in a predicament with their, where they are in the league, and you know he he needs to really switch their switch their form around. And so I think, you know, the, the qualities that we would associate with a with Derek Adams' team would be they'd be you know well very well organised, defensively solid, and I think that's those are the qualities they're going to need. Um, you know, up against Argyle today, he'll know that they that Argyle will look to come and play football and come and attack and create chances. So yeah. you know, from Morgan's perspective, they'll they'll be looking to put on a strong defensive performance and perhaps hope to to hit Argyle on the break. Do you think Morecambe is a good fit for him as a manager? Because he's obviously been there, gone away, and now come back again. 
yeah, he's not been gone very long, and you know he obviously had great success getting them promoted the last time he was there. Um, I don't know how how the fans felt about the, the the way that he left the club. You know, going to going to Bradford at a time after they've got gone up a league, obviously. But you know, on the whole, I think they'll they'll be excited about the success he had before and, and hoping that he can rescue them from the the current position in the league. Yeah, and would you say, in their perspective, getting the draw at Ipswich last weekend was a pretty decent result for them? Yeah, I think on the on the run of form obviously you know any any points that you can get when you're down the bottom of the league are, are vitally important particularly when you're playing against teams that are, that are you know above you in the league um but ultimately i think if they're gonna if they're gonna really progress from where they are they're gonna need to start turning some of those those draws and losses into wins um yeah. you know fingers crossed for us it doesn't start today yeah and his job at present is to keep Morecambe in the division do you think he will be able to do that based on what you've seen of him at argyle and Morecambe previously yeah it's tricky i think i, I watched an interview with him and and uh, uh, you know, he was asked about whether he thought the squad was good enough to stay up, and he was very non-committal on that himself. So, you know, I don't think he's he's there to promise. Yeah, we can definitely do this, but clearly he'll he'll be making changes and trying to organise the side in a way that allows them to start picking up points and hopefully get them out of that situation. Yeah, and I believe he spoke about this match in the press earlier, saying you know he's kind of envisioning it going end to end and it not being you know a, an Argyle you know victory straight away or anything like that. So. You know, tactically, do you think he's just going to want to give Argyle a run for their money and really take them around the pitch? Yeah, I mean, I think in perhaps in, in the same similar way that we see lots of teams that come here, maybe maybe apart from Rotherham, who are obviously a you know maybe a slightly different proposition. Yeah. Um, teams that come here look to soak up pressure and and you know try and get in the way of Argyle's positive attacking play, and before trying to nick something themselves. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's what Morecambe try and do today. You know, they, they'll likely to set up with a back three um, you know they'll be as we mentioned well organized although Derek Adams is still obviously in the process of getting used to his, his squad yeah let's have a little look at Morecambe's side for today then which we can bring up on the screen for you uh, one of the names to mention Cole Stockton he has 21 goals in all competitions looks like he'll be quite key in this game yeah you know he's, he's really an accomplished finisher and, and our goal will definitely need to make sure they don't give him any chances today um, Similar vein to you know Smith and um, in terms of Rotherham strikers from last week, um, yeah. you know they they're deadly when they get given chances. So it would be vital for Argyle to kind of limit Stockton's opportunities in and around the box. Um, you know he's a real danger danger man, and Morecambe will be looking to him for there to supply the goals today. Yeah, and it's worth mentioning as well, not uh, coming up on the team sheet today, but what we were originally anticipating it. Tumani uh, Diagaraga is a former Argyle player in midfield. Do you think not having him in their side will be, you know, quite a, a miss for them? Yeah, I think it is a loss. You know, when when you go back to a club, as well as the manager, you know, adding that extra bit of spice. If there's players that are going back to a former club as well, it can, you know, really add a little bit to their game. As much as maybe it's not the, the most important thing for everyone else that's at the game or involved in the game, for them it can be. So, you know, to have him not in the squad and not in the team against Argyle today, I think is is a positive for Argyle. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I'll take any positive that Argyle <laughs> can get, right? How do you think they will play, bearing in mind, you know, missing him in the midfield? Yeah, as, as we kind of mentioned, I think Derek Adams is known for having his teams well organised, yeah. you know, and, and coming here to play against Argyle, who are, you know, we always say it, there's no secret the way that they want to play. They want to play out from the back. And they want to try and get the ball into, into Danny Mayer in particular, in and yeah. around the box in that inside left position and try and create those chances for today, Jeff Gott and Hardy up front. Um, you know, from Morgan's perspective, they'll be looking to be solid, to be compact, you know, make sure there's no gaps in between their defenders that, yeah. that Hardy and Jeffcott can exploit. And how do you think Argyle will go about getting the win against uh, Derek Adams' side? Yeah, I think they'll you know, look to continue in the same vein as, as they did against Rotherham last week, particularly in the first half, I think, where they, they did manage to get the ball to Danny Mayer a lot. He was really effective. Um, second half, Rotherham did well to limit the, the supply into him. So I think they'll, they'll be looking to get back to that you know, the, the pattern of play that they were able to, to show in the first half last week, you know, lots of ball into Danny Mayer and when he's on the ball in and around the box, you know, that can only be a good thing for Argyle. Yeah. Now, rather than push you for a score, which I sometimes like to do, what kind of game do you think fans in Home Park today can expect to see? I, th I, I really hope it's going to be an entertaining game. I think there might be a need for a bit of patience, though. So, you know, I'm confident that Argyle can create the chances they need to win the game, but it might not happen straight away. And I think it's important for the... You know, all the supporters here today that we, you know, appreciate that. Morecambe might want to come here to try and frustrate us. And so, you know, showing that patience and getting behind the team and, and staying behind the team, even yeah. if they don't go ahead early, 
was really crucial. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ian. Thank you for joining us once again on Argar TV. You are back up on commentary duty with Rob in a minute. Um, and for those of you who are watching online, you can, of course, get in touch with us on social media, and we would love to hear from you. I will be checking out the uh, Twitter feed throughout the first half of the game and hopefully read out some of your comments come half time. You can get in touch with me at only one Argyle on Twitter, and uh, I look forward to seeing where in the world some of you are watching from today and possibly where even in home park you are and we'll try and give you a bit of a wave and a shout out now just before we hand you over to Robin Ian because I've got to give him enough time to get up the stairs uh, the commentary of the game is going to be run by them of course and we are delighted to have teamed up with online food order and delivery service Uber Eats for the 21-22 campaign. They have joined the club as an affiliate partner and Uber Eats will sponsor our all new pre-match quiz on the official Argyle app as well as our brand new moment of the month feature which you saw a little bit of earlier uh, which will be on the club's social media channels and of course here on Argyle TV. Now to kick off that partnership, if you are an Argyle fan, you can download the app and you can receive £10 off your first order when you spend a minimum of £15. All you've got to do is use the code ARGYLE10 when ordering. Okay, I've seen the players uh, leaving the pitch behind me, so that means we are almost ready to go. The music is playing as well. So a reminder very quickly, if you are watching abroad and you have bought the match pass, you can watch the game on Argyle TV via the website. And for those of you watching in the UK, audio commentary is available with our very own Rob McNichol and Ian Stonebridge over on pafc.co.uk. It is Argyle against Morecambe and it's coming up next. <laughs> 